The Empress Finest, and the scourge of rebels everywhere. Today, we will paint a Stormtrooper. The miniature was sprayed first with a matte white rattle can to create our initial undercoat. This is going to be darkened down ever so slightly to create an off-white armour colour. And we shall use some Vallejo Ghost Grey Surface Primer to paint this on. Now you can also mix a couple of paints to get a similar outcome to this. Here some uniform grey and spaceship exterior was smushed together and diluted down slightly with water. Using a makeup brush a thin layer was added to our trooper to give it a light grey appearance. By switching to a smaller miniature brush you can get into those hard to reach areas also. Now you can bypass this stage altogether and just jump on to the next one. However, the end result will give you a slightly brighter looking armour. But it will save you time if you have loads to get through. Mixing some holy white speed paint with medium is going to be the key here today. This diluted paint is going to be placed all over the white armour. And with the properties of these paints, it allows the liquids to form into the recesses to create our shadows. But then a thin layer sits on top of the surface to give it a nice smooth finish. Just try not to let the paint pool anywhere, otherwise it will dry in a darker uneven patch. As we will see later on top of the helmet. Once dry I created some extra depth for the shadows by using a fine detail brush. And applying just the holy white speed paint without any medium. It was added on in a few places and this will help the highlights later on when we pick them out. Due to the contrast that we are creating from the darker to the lighter tones. So we will leave the armour there for the moment and focus our efforts on the details. We will paint those to a completion point and then come back to the armour. This will help because if we do get any paint onto the white of the armour, we can just tidy this up later. Here we are picking out the black details as well as his gun. At this stage you could also paint his gloves and the area between the white armour plates. However, I envisage this as a softer material compared to the armour and the gun, so this is going to be painted in a slightly different way. Just for a bit of variety. So back to our speed paints now, and this time it's grim black mixed with a little bit of medium. And this was applied using a detail brush to all of the aforementioned areas. Take your time with this step, as this is very easy to get our black paint onto the white. If you do, then don't worry too much, as we will be tidying up the armour in a little while. The same paint was used to pick out the recesses between some of the armour plates, such as the knees and the top of the legs, as well as the shoulders and elbows. You can see as this mix of grim black and medium starts to dry, some of the white underneath can still be seen, like on the gloves. And we are going to treat this as a form of base coat because we're going to add some blue onto it now. In the form of cloudburst blue speed paint mixed with some medium. This is going to go over some of the larger areas that we have just painted with the grim black. Such as the gloves, his elbows and the upper legs. We're basically creating a kind of a dark bluish hue here. Just to represent this different material and it will look different to his blaster, which we will be painting now. So it's not all black, some silver details were added on. Now I know this is not representative of the movies, but hey ho, it's a small miniature on a gaming board and we want it to look a bit more visually appealing. These silver areas were finished off with a wash and a highlight. A fine detail brush was used for the highlighting stage just to create those thin lines. Whilst we've got our highlighting hat on, it's time for the gloves and the other areas that we painted black and blue. A greyish blue highlight of wolf grey was used for this. It will make these areas a little bit more defined, but also separate it from the black of the gun. Some lines were then painted on to create some interest between the areas of the armour. And it's these little extras that I like to add on so it doesn't seem like the trooper is just black or white. 
And because we went with the blue highlight for the last detail, we are going to go for a colder looking grey for the blaster. And speaking of details, if you would like even more guidance to help you paint your miniatures whilst you're not on YouTube, then I have some downloadable PDF painting guides on my website. I'm always adding to these, so if you do have any requests, then let me know in the comments below. It's tidy up time, and we are using a Vallejo Ghost Grey, which has been thinned down slightly with water, to go over some of the flatter surfaces of the armour, just to smooth it out and to touch up any of the areas that the black has gone onto. And if you've got a whole bunch of bucket heads to paint, then you may want to bypass this step because we're going to be applying some weathering in a moment. But if you did want the cleaner look, then this is how you do it. From the start, the reason why I've gone down the pale grey off-white look, as I'm not too fond of having super bright white looking armour. It naturally fades and gets dirty over time, and how can you highlight white with white? By picking out some of the edges of the sculpt with a matte white paint, this highlight can be seen nice enough over our pale grey. And due to the darker tones that we have going on as well, it fools the eye slightly into thinking that the armour is white. We are going to have some fun doing some weathering now, as our Stormtrooper is going to be based on Endor. Whilst he's searching for those pesky rebels and those cute little fluffy Ewoks, his armour is going to get a little bit dirty and scuffed. Some camo cloak speed paint heavily diluted down with some water, and using a manky old brush, the paint was dotted onto the lower legs of our Stormtrooper. Next is one of my favourite products to use, and that is weathering powders. We are going to apply this by using two different methods today. The first of which is to use a dabbing motion with the brush, and positioning this powder in the areas that you would like. Less is more here, because you can easily go way over the top and make him look like he's just come from a Dagobah swamp. The second method is to add a small amount of water to the powder and mix it up. This will create a kind of a watery clay consistency. By using our old brush and prodding it into some tissue, we can get the bristles to separate for us. And using different movements such as brushing, dabbing, rotating, you can add a variety of scuffs and scratches to the armour which will go along with our Endor basing. So let's now create that forest floor feeling. This gunky sludge by AK is wonderful stuff for dioramas and also miniature painters out there. It's fairly thick and gloopy and sets rock hard once it's dry. So we will use this as coverage on our base. This stuff is very similar to Games Workshop's Stirling Mud, However, this pot from AK is 10 times as large, coming in at 250 milliliters, but it's only just over twice the price. So it's going to last you quite a long time. Now to create some woodland flooring. I've got a box of dry twigs that I've foraged over the years, and at the bottom is some broken residue which is perfect for our scale miniatures. This was sprinkled on whilst the base was still wet, and it will dry very nicely to create our woodland flooring. And what kind of woodland would it be without some broken branches and foliage scattered on the floor? Just pop them into position and then let the base top dry. And to waste no time, the base room was painted with Steel Legion Drab by Games Workshop. It's a nice neutral brown colour and one of my favourites to use for base rims. The foliage for the base was done in a few different ways. However, first we need to glue this onto the base, and for this I use some tacky PVA glue. I prefer this to normal PVA glue as it's less runny and it's, well, tackier, allowing us to glue the materials into place without it falling off. 
I love using dried moss for basing as it's perfect for our scale miniatures. It looks super realistic and the colour is really nice. The dried moss we are using today is about 5 years old. And I'm just poking it into position with an airbrush needle. And for my next foliage trick is to use some cheap plastic planting which you can find in a variety of shops. This was originally a fern which has been cut up into many pieces. And then from that you can cut them up into even tinier pieces. Perfect for a mini fern. As they are plastic you can slightly pierce them with a needle. Enabling you to pick them up as they are a little bit finicky. And to position them where you want. To take the plasticky glossy look off. And to make it look a little bit more realistic. Just add some matte varnish and then let that dry. Now you might think that some of this plant life is a little bit too wild and wacky. Oh, we can trim this down by using some sharp nail scissors like so. Just for some simple woodland pruning. With the end of the Stormtrooper tutorial, what Star Wars Legion guide would you like to see next? Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on hobbying.